Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Reimagine with Robin. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. As you know, Reimagine with Robin is a 15-minute live conversation with a leader who is working to reinvent how we interact with this world that we live in, whether it's renting physical spaces to running cafes and more. So um, I have a very specific question for our audience today is, what was the last thing that you had lost? Um, and did you find it? Please type that <laughs> into the chat. Um, I could, I would say the last thing that I lost was actually my engagement ring, but I did find it. Thank you to the airport <laughs> in Las Vegas. Um, but like, please don't tell anyone. Uh, this month's guest speaker on Reimagine with Robin is Skylar Logsdon, who is the co-founder and CEO of Boomerang. So I've gotten to know Skylar. We were just looking back at this since 2016. Well, at least we were connected in 2016 of January, but we may have actually known each other a little bit before that. Um, and at that time, he was a, one of the very first employees at Takari, which is still one of the one an amazing company that works with a lot of our portfolio companies. And so when he shared this idea about Boomerang with me, I was like, wow, uh, this is something that's really needed in this world. And I had to be a part of the journey. And so turning it over to you, Skylar, I know you are dialing in from Miami today, um, but would we'll love to hear a little bit more about you and like, what are you reimagining? Yeah. Robin, it's so nice to see you. Thank you for having me on on this series. It's it's a pleasure. So thank you everyone for, for joining as well, taking time out of your day. I know everyone's busy, so we appreciate it. I am Skylar. I'm the CEO of Boomerang, as Robin said. I'm originally from a small town called Ojai, California. It's a suburb of LA. Studied in Philadelphia. I met Philippe in college, one of my co-founders. He was the, the founder of Shazam, True Car, Tatari, and now we are co-founders on this company, and we are reimagining lost and found. I think as Robin mentioned, everyone has a lost and found story. It's usually just lost. It usually never gets found. And so we're, what we're reimagining is, you know, when you lose something, you, you have that doomsday feeling, like that your stomach just doesn't feel right. You're like, I know it's long gone because we've seen it all before. You have to submit a claim, you have to call, you have to email, you follow up on follow-up on follow-up. And people aren't as usually as lucky as Robin and they just never get back their item. And so we wanna flip that around. We imagine a world where like you can lose something and you're actually quite optimistic. You're gonna get it back because you know Boomerang exists and you get the item back. So that's what we're really reimagining is a world where you actually get items back because Boomerang exists. Thank you for existing. <laughs> um, well, you know, Lost and Found has existed, right, in different formats, whether it's at an airline or at an airport, at um, a hotel or stadium. So what is it that you're doing differently um, with, with Boomerang? Yeah, so I think the disruption for us is kind of a, a two-part story. One, when you lose something at an airline, a stadium, a shopping mall, an airport, Uber, Lyft, a gym, a movie theater, a casino, a theme park, mm -hmm. every process is different. One company will say, email us. One company has a type form. One company has a call our support number. There isn't an 800 pound gorilla in lost and found. There isn't the Yelp of lost and found. There isn't the Apple pay where you just expect them to have a partnership with Boomerang. So we wanna get all the companies that collect an item on property to use a sophisticated and modern technology, which is Boomerang, that allows customers to submit claims on their website in a seamless way. We don't need to sit on hold. We don't need to just write a long message about the story of how we lost it in email. We can actually go to their website, say, hey, I'm Skylar Logston. I lost my watch on this date. Here's a photo of it, submit. And then Boomerang actually updates you every single day on the status of that. So you don't have to waste time tomorrow picking up the phone again just to figure out that it's still not found. So first part of the story is get every single business that collects items partnered with Boomerang. That sets the fabric and the foundation of lost and found. 
it should be table stakes for a company that, oh, we find items. And of course, we're partnered with Boomerang and they power our whole lost and found. And the second part of the story, I hold it a bit close to my chest, so I won't share too much about that now, but definitely at a future date. Yeah. Um, so where, like, where is it happening today? Like, who are you partnering with right now at Boomerang? Who's yeah. excited for it? Yeah, so we launched in, gosh, October of last year, or I guess we started the company in October of last year, and we built product for about seven months. We launched three months ago. The product is in customers and partners' hands, and every single day we see items going back to people. So I'm super proud of our partners already. For example, we're, we're in WeWork. You lose something at a WeWork, right inside their app, you can submit a claim. Anyone that finds an item at WeWork, they hand it to the operations team. The ops team has a boomerang portal. They take a photo of the item. They describe the item. They save it inside their boomerang portal. And then you lose something at WeWork. You submit that claim. And we actually do the matching claim versus inventory. As Shazam matches music, I always say we match claim versus inventory. Yeah. So we'll tell the customer, hey, we have the item. Would you like it shipped or would you like to come pick it up? So we handle all the communication for WeWork. And once the item gets back to the, the, the person that lost the item, we send an email saying, congrats, you go back your item, we're boomerang. We exist to get people back the items they love. That's the end of the transaction. We're also in stadiums such as like Cleveland Brown Stadium. Uh, it's football season now. We can see every Sunday this big spike in lost items, claims, inventory uploaded. Atlanta Hawks, basketball season's around the corner. They also have some con concerts here and there, and we can see it. We're powering all of it. Universities, we're at UC Berkeley. Uh, that's actually where Philippe went to college and came up with the idea of Shazam. So it's really cool that they are a partner of ours. Virginia State University, Shenandoah, Visible College, or uh, at some malls. So there's so many companies we haven't got to, but all the right companies, they know about us, they like it, and we're working on launching more and more partners. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited. I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, I feel like, especially now with two kids, I'll be losing things for, forever, <laughs> like all the time. Um, I, I also want to bring up this point, like you were at Tatari before and you helped enable brands, build their brand, right? And spread the word. Um, and one thing that really stood out to me recently, you were telling me about is like, you can do all this, but at the end, if your customer ends up in any way unhappy, like if they, even if they had an amazing experience um, on your flight, but then you lost their luggage, <laughs> um, they'll like think of it with like this terrible experience. And so with Boomerang, like why, why do you think there is this like major catalyst now? And is that perception around like customer, retention, loyalty, and service changing um, in like brands' mindsets? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think over the past few years, a lot of companies lost a lot of their, their clients and their businesses went down to uh, very thin businesses. They were skeletons of what they used to be because their customers were no longer there. And then it swung back in a big way. And I think it swung back faster than they thought and they couldn't accommodate so well to wow their customer. And I think a lot of companies feel bad of like what they've put their customers through uh, once they came back to be a customer again. And they look at Boomerang as a chance to wow them. Because when you lose something, you don't expect to get it back. You expect for it to just be long gone. And it's such a magical moment where they can actually say like, I don't know, it's on its way back. Here's the, the, the shipping label or here's the shipping tracking number. It's coming back to you. And so especially the travel industry, airlines, airports, like you've read all about it, the crisis of the bags this summer. Some airlines are, mis are actually misplacing one out of every 10 bags. That's a lot of customers that have had a, a rough trip because their bags didn't make it. And it's not like it came a day delayed, not like five days. Like, no, there's bags are still misplaced for months on end. And that costs the airlines and the airports a lot of money. They have to refund the flight. They have to give a voucher. They have to pay a certain dollar amount for every day your bag still isn't there and counting mm -hmm. like months on months on it. So we see that they want to wow the customer. They want to find all these touch points of where we're falling short and 
they want to fix that. They want to get it right next summer. They want to get it right for this holiday season. So it's quite a timely product for the travel industry, but I think also for restaurants, also for universities, you have all these people back on campus again, it's a full year ahead. And they're thinking of like, how do we elevate our game here? And Boomerang fits well in their tech stack. Yeah, it, I mean, I feel like right now, everyone's like coming back to the office. So we work is probably going to get a lot um, yeah. starting September, right? Even and, and universities for sure, where like it was hybrid for the longest time. Um, and they probably had no one to staff because they they were like, oh, we didn't realize that there will be so many more items again. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Maybe you've experienced this, Robin. Like once we got back out of COVID and started doing the things we used to do, like I forgot I went through TSA and like I left my watch in there because I'm like, I forgot what it was like to go through TSA. You need to like sanity check that you have everything. It's the yeah. same thing at offices. People are coming back with their briefcase for the first time, their chargers, and they leave the charger. They leave the wallet because you're just not used to doing that again. You're used to just working at home and you can be forgetful about things because it's in your house. You'll find it eventually. So you're right. I think offices, yeah, we're seeing a big uptick of people just leaving things behind. Yeah, it's so timely, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I guess, you know, this is boomerang today and you're starting to get into these stadiums and travel and universities. How do you envision the world be changed by boomerang in, I don't know, the next five to 10 years? Yeah, so I imagine where a customer, the problem is, is when you lose something, you don't know where it's at. So you have to think back of all the places I was at today and you need to go submit an email. You need to go call and tell them what you lost. So imagine a travel day, Rob, and you travel a ton. You hop in your Uber, you go through JFK, you hop on your JetBlue flight, you go through SFO, you hop in another Uber, maybe you take a lift depending on timing, and you go to the office. You meet a, a startup at a WeWork. If you notice in a day of like, oh my gosh, where is my blank? There you go. You got to call every single one of those companies and submit a claim. And that's just the first part. Then you got to follow up tomorrow. I imagine a day where Boomerang is partnered with all of them and you could submit a claim across all of them. You say, I don't know, like I was with all of them. Please just submit the claim across to everybody. And then we update you at 7 a.m. every morning. We're still searching. We still haven't found it. So we could do all that work for you. That's when I close my eyes, I imagine a world that lost and found submitting claims is as easy as that. Oh, wow. That would, and you can even know, like, will I even get that item back in time, right? Or do I just need to get a new one altogether? That's right. That's right. It could have been, it could have been you dropped it. it. It was in your house. It's actually not with any of those companies at all. But Boomerang does all that work for you. We tell the companies, hey, Robin actually found it at her house. Like, cancel the claim. We're all good. Yeah. Having like one seamless touch point is so nice. Um, whether it's like via text or email or just like your app, right? It would yep. be, it's awesome. That's right. This question is for you. Um, how are you reimagining yourself as a leader um, this year? And also um, you being first time CEO. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What a great question. Um, so I think Growing up, I'm not sure if you knew this, but I played quarterback growing up. And it's from that experience, like you have to lead the team. You have to you know, rally everyone together. You have to take command and, you know, get everyone to work as a unit to achieve and, and perform very well so you could win a game. If you win enough games, you win a championship. You have to get everyone bought in. Everyone has to know the playbook because if one person doesn't know the playbook, it throws off the whole play. Mm -hmm. So I was always fascinated and really interested in not just leadership but effective leadership like I don't watch tv shows that you name it I haven't seen it like I watch a lot of youtube on leadership from football players to ceos to I, I any just philosophers I just like love listening and learning from people and all the different approaches leadership isn't rah-rah it's not the loudest person like who is the best leader. There's so many different ways to be an effective leader. And so I just want to continue to evolve and, and, and grow as a leader with the company because at different stages, it, it requires a different type of leadership. Getting the company off the ground with my two co-founders is a lot different than managing 
nine people today. So I don't ever feel like I'm done learning at leadership. I just want to keep building, keep growing. It's a muscle and you got to keep uh, investing time and wanting to be better. I want to be a better leader every single day and I'm doing the work to get educated so I can be an effective leader for my team, for the company, for our investors. And I think when the company is successful, that will tell me of like, hey, you're, you're being a good leader because everyone's bought in on the vision. Everyone's working well together. The culture is phenomenal. And you're like accomplishing what you set out to accomplish. That That's a lot. <laughs> but I feel like every time I speak to you and we catch up like every month, right? Um, there's so much more progress and more team members, right? But you also send me amazing videos of like what your team did together. Um, and, you know, it's it's very refreshing and also kind of invigorating at the same time to see. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I know we're at time, but um, it was really exciting having you on here because we're coming up on like September and holiday season. So <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to not having any lost luggage. Um, and so hopefully you'll be there and Boomerang will be there to solve everyone's problems. So thank, thank you, you so Karen. much. Um, and also thank you for having GTV as part of your journey. It's been an honor to have you guys on the ride. You guys have been amazing investors, so supportive and really can't thank you enough for everything. So good to see you. Thank you to everyone for joining.